tree of life, an awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn, still you rise with every Seed that dies to rise in glory, may we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, we may die to rise anew. We may die to rise anew. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost and broken wears the body of our Lord. Where's the body of our Gentle Jesus, mighty spirit, come and claim our hearts anew. We may all your joy inherit if we bear the cross with you. If we bear the cross with you. Christ, you lead and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river, you the sea. We the river, you the sea. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. Mindful of the God alive in me, I tremble at Pilate's words. How did I come to this place of utter failure? I know that God is here, present, even at this awful moment of condemnation. I want to escape, but I know that is not possible. I weep for all who are sentenced to die. The baby whose mother chooses abortion. The soldiers, mothers, fathers, and children when governments choose war the guilty and the innocent when the state chooses the death penalty. Let us pray. Grateful for those who have the courage to choose life in all circumstances, we remember that we live in God. We invite the Spirit to guide our decisions and to challenge our hearts. There is no greater love, says the The second station. 
Jesus carries his cross. Life has tested me in many ways. I feel my strength being drained from me. I am not sure I can continue. I know the pain of losing my friends. I mourn for those who know weakness and ill health and the sadness of loneliness and old age. Too often, people blame my God for their sufferings. They think that the God who loves them also sends them crosses to bear. They fail to see that my God, our God, is here with us, embracing us and helping us grow. Let us pray. Remembering the sacred presence, we believe even though we do not see. We carry our burdens, trusting that the divine breath within gives us power and strength. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. I tried so hard to continue, but I could not go on. My heart is broken. I failed to convince people that God loved them. I understand when disappointment and frustration disturb your soul. I understand why you feel like quitting. Remember that you live and move in God. Whenever you feel defeated, I am with you. I will raise you up and we will continue on our journey together. Let us pray. Inspired by Jesus, who trusted in God even when he was crushed by misunderstanding and disbelief, we commit ourselves to remain faithful to the dreams and hopes of the Spirit for our world. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. I can barely look into the agonized eyes of my mother. I do not want her to see me this way. I know she desires to take my place. Loving and being loved brings suffering to both of us yet we would not have it any other way. 
That's how I love you too. I am with you when you cry, when you are in pain, when you feel helpless. Let us pray. Because Jesus suffered, we know that as his followers, we will not be spared. We pray that his companionship and example will strengthen us as we walk with those we love. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. I notice that Simon is being coerced into helping me. Nevertheless, I am grateful. As I struggle to continue walking, I notice that his attitude begins to change. My cross seems to become lighter and I realize that it is because of his effort to carry more of it. When you are not enthusiastic about helping others, I want you to remember that I appreciate the smallest gesture of kindness. I hope that like Simon, you will discover that service, no matter how minimal, will produce a new joy within you. Let us pray. Recalling how Simon became a consoling support for Jesus, we are mindful of the gift that we can be to others. We marvel that even in our weakest moments, we can be treasure for someone. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. I see the brave Veronica break away from the crowd and come towards me with her towel. She does not care about the whispers or the disapproving stares. I see tears in her eyes as she lifts the towel to my face. I praise your compassion whenever you respond to the suffering around you. I congratulate you when you are strong against those who try to pressure you to abandon your conscience in order to give in to the popular or majority opinion. I applaud you when you stand for the truth, even if you must stand alone. Let us pray. We give thanks for those women and men who have been examples of courage when all around them have tried to convince them to compromise their beliefs. 
We are sorry for the times that we have given in to our fears. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. As I fall again, I am tormented by my failure. Where did I go wrong? Why was I betrayed by one of my own? Will anyone remember what I tried to teach them? When you encounter the rejects of the world, remember that God sees their hearts. I understand why they fall again and again. Some of them have never known love or praise, support or friendship. And I also understand you when you fail to be the person you want to be. Never forget that I love you. Let us pray. Remembering that God is present even in our darkness and wrongdoing, we forgive ourselves and others for the harm and injustices done by us and to us. The eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. The men with whom I had shared so much have abandoned me, but these women weep openly for me. Their caring and compassion confirm the truth that we are connected Pain and sorrow are common bonds. I mourn for them as they long to see the day when we live as brothers and sisters. They realize that in God's reign, we must work together as equals, no one lording power over another. They have believed my message and realize the cost of being faithful to the truth. Let us pray. Convinced by the example of Jesus, who removed divisions among peoples, we pray to be open to the work of the Spirit in everyone.
The ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. The soldiers are impatient with me as I fall again. It would be easier to lie here. It would be easier to quit. What good have I accomplished? But somehow I know I must go on. I struggle to stand. I realize I am not alone. Whenever life tests you to the point of giving up, think of me. I will stay with you as you wrestle with doubt, despair, or hopelessness. Let us pray. Like us, Jesus found strength in God's power and his life. We trust that when all seems lost in our life, we will rely on that same power to enable us to continue walking in faith. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. Not only is the pain excruciating as they pull off my clothes, I am humiliated as the onlookers stare at my nakedness. Some mock me, others sneer. But these two are loved by my God. Will they ever understand? When your dignity is attacked, and when others try to shame you for your faith, do not worry about your reputation. Do not be concerned when others ridicule your efforts to love both friend and enemy. Let us pray. Joyful in the freedom that Jesus taught us, we pledge to treat all peoples as temples of God, treasures in earthen vessels. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. The reality of my dying is confirmed with every explosion of agony as the hammer pounds each nail. I cannot escape. How did I become such a threat to the authorities? Yes, I had crowds listening to me, but I taught them only about a loving God and how to respond to that love 
by caring for others. Do you find it perplexing that some people like the security of many rules rather than the refuge of a loving God? I think that I upset those who were in charge because I healed people on the Sabbath. I allowed a woman to wash my feet. Those in power must have feared that I would take away all their followers. Let us pray. Because Jesus wanted to free people from fear and work to bring about a new reign of God, they judged him a traitor to their tradition. May we learn to live with confidence in our loving God when we meet unjustified criticism and are wrongly convicted. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. I look down and see my mother being comforted by John. I hear the convicts on either side of me. The crowd is yelling with satisfaction as they notice that I am suffocating. Oh God, my God, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? I hear the jeers, the mocking, the laughing. All goes dark around me. I forgive. I forgive. I still believe, though all seems lost. I still trust. I am dead. The soldier plunges his sword into my side. Let us pray. Although he was tested by darkness and deprived of God's consolation, Jesus died trusting in God's presence. Because we are the body of Christ, we believe what cannot be seen. We hope for new life. We forgive what is unforgivable. There is no greater love, says the The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. My mother's heart is breaking as she holds my lifeless body on her lap. Her grief numbs her faith that I am alive in God. Her grief does not allow her to rejoice that I am with her. 
Tears stream from her eyes as her mind replays images from my childhood. As her shoulders begin to tremble with her sobs, I put my arms around her. I will never leave you, I tell her. You will see me again. We will always be together. Let us pray. Reflecting on the death of Jesus and his mother's sorrow, we gain strength and learn to live again. With our wounded hearts, we discover again how we are one with all who suffer the anguish of loss. Fourteenth station. The body of Jesus is placed in the tomb. As Joseph and Nicodemus carry my body to its tomb, my mother and a few other disciples, including Magdalene, follow them. After our Jewish rituals are performed, they leave my perfumed, wrapped body and the women promise to return. They walk away in silence, and my mother is grateful for their friendship. I go with them, rejoicing in the awareness that we are all one in the divine presence. Let us pray. Knowing that through his death, Jesus will be transformed, we rejoice that his resurrection gives birth to a new life beyond our imagining. We give thanks for this truth in our life and in the lives of all whom we love. Pray for those who support us in our difficult times.